This program is brought to you by the Center for a Sustainable Today. I can help with yeah. this. All right, yes, I will come do. and aid okay. you, Kai. So, this okay. one, there's a couple things we're well, going to do. Lucas, First, we as probably soon as you watch this out. demo that the Kai and I are going to give you, then you could attempt oh, no. yeah. something. Yeah, okay. please help me. Okay, Kai, are you going to help me push? Ready? Let's push. Rush. Do you want me to do it or do you want to nice. do it? Nice. Okay, Good job. Go for it. Laura, can I? This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. I'm in a lovely little garden with lovely happy flags in Bellingham, Washington with Laura Plout, who does stuff with kids and gardens and food. Tell me what it is. I do. Um, well, tell me. really what I'm after is, is connecting kids with food and where it comes mm. from and mm. why it matters. So the overarching ideas of what I'm after is developing a sense of food competency, of knowing how to grow your own food and how to prepare your own food. Food literacy, which to me really means understanding why our food choices matter and why one, cho one food choice might have a different social environmental impact than another food choice. And then the last piece is food justice, which is for me really about making sure that there's enough culturally appropriate accessible food for everybody. But when I'm working with kids, the way I like to get at that is through joyful food experiences. Joyful so, food experiences, don't we all? Yeah, yay! <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, and kids crave it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Planting and cooking, mm -hmm. uh, interacting with animals. And so we run summer camp programs on this site in the summer, and we also provide leadership for 11 school gardens currently in wow. Whatcom County. Okay, let's um, go back to the summer programs on yeah. this site. You know, yeah. We'll see more of it, gardens will, and yeah. chickens and turkeys and other animals. So how long is it, the program? They're week-long programs. Uh, kids, depending on their age, the younger kids are here for half days, Monday through Thursday. Um, th that program is called Farm Camp, and that's pretty much what you'll be seeing today. Okay. And then we also run a program for slightly older kids, the 8- to 12-year-olds, that we call Camp Pizza. And Camp the Pizza! The whole thing is organized <laughs> around the idea of if you were building a pizza from scratch, really from oh. scratch, what would it take? We figured we'd start with a beloved food and work backwards. So we grind grain, we make cheese, we make the sauce, and we go to the farmer's market and interview farmers. We visit a cheese shop. We, we just try to get as many different angles so that kids are thinking about when there's something that I'm sticking in my mouth, how many hands have touched this? How many miles has it traveled? What were the choices that the farmer and the processor and the vendor made all the way along the food chain? How, and for the older kids, is that a, a whole day long? Or yep. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we have them from 9 to 3. All of our programs include eating. We never, we never don't eat here. Um, and part of what we're after is there's a lot of programs that garden with kids, but my experience is that until the food goes in the mouth, it hasn't really clicked. Yeah, I can get that. Because when you... You know, you look at a carrot there, and you and you planted the seed for it, and you've watched it, and you've watered it, and then you pull it out, which I haven't asked permission to do, but you pull it out and you eat it. Yeah, these would be it, scrawny. It, it makes um, well, it's great. It it's like I, I'm guessing, yeah. kids would say there's a relationship. And so often what we hear from parents, even parents who make really healthy food choices for themselves and their families at home, is that there's something about the experience here that, that makes a shift for their kids. Well, I can imagine. You've got involvement. Yeah. Right? It's my it's, carrot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah and I have I what to grow it, yeah. and pull yeah. the slugs off or whatever yeah. it is. Um, well, then, so there's that relationship. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. I would imagine, well, I'll ask you all, some of the parents, do the families start to change their choices on what they eat? I mean, are kids eating more vegetables than they used to because they, That's you know? That's what they report. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and it doesn't matter. You guys can come in if you want. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, a lot, the kids who come to our summer programs, their families sign them up, but we also work with programs where we contract to provide these services to them so it's not something the kids or the families are, 
are wow. choosing, wow. and we get the same results. Really? In fact, we might even get more exciting results from the kids where we just show up and start doing things with them, and they didn't know they wanted it. Now, are those and, programs in the schools, or do they um, come here? Programs in the schools, and they come here. Oh, so we have okay. a whole bunch of different partnerships. We worked this summer with a group that was... Um, working with low-income kids with emotional behavioral challenges mm -hmm. and we spent cool. every Tuesday afternoon in the garden and in the kitchen with them and um, I think we'll do it again next summer. So I'll, bet, was, that, I'll yeah. bet that was the, something that they looked forward to. Yeah, it was. It really was. It was. So tell yeah. me in our last moment here before our kids arrive and we start to do the day, what do you most love about doing this? I guess what I most love, and, and I, I should say, I should back up and say that the, the way I got into this, I'm a lifelong educator, but it was really becoming a mom that oh. got me into this work and watching through my son's eyes all of the messages that are sent to kids about what we ought to want to consume. And I thought, well, either I'm going to become a really naggy mom and always be shaking my finger and I'll always be saying, well, this isn't good, do that, or I'm going to find an alternative that's so joyful that my child and other children would choose it. So uh, w I think that's what I love is that is that we can preach this stuff until we're sick or we can just say, you know, we do it because it's, it feels good. It makes us happy. It takes care of the planet. It takes care of communities. And I think the kids, even the really little ones, on some level, that really clicks. Fabulous. Okay, let's have fun. Okay, good. Oh, no, this, this is, is, is Janaea's really Hi, I'm Janaea, and I am glad you are all here. I am really excited. And that person behind the camera who you get to ignore is Robin. Charles and she's just here. got the camera, but you know. Hey, Oliver, what do you got? About that. First of all, I wanted to say thank you all for coming this afternoon. I really appreciate it. It's kind of fun when other people in other parts of the world want to know what we're up to. And the only way they can find out what we're up to is to see it and hear it, right? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to kind of do our normal day today, pretty much. We're not going to make lunch because it's not lunch time. But we are going to make some food. We're going to make some applesauce. And, um, of course, we got to take care of the animals, right? Mm -hmm. And, of course, we got to take yeah, care I of the like, garden. I like those goats. Uh -huh. I don't think we're going to see the goats today. And I want to let you know, just so there's no surprises, that we're also not going to see the chickens today. Okay? The chickens are gone. The turkeys are still there. And the bunnies are still there. So those are the animals we'll see today. Okay? Charlie's going, yeah. <laughs> and the bunnies are still in their cage because we needed your help to let them out. And, um, what season is it right now? Um, mm, it's kind of a trick September. question, isn't it? It's September yeah. is the month. What season? I think I heard someone say it. Fall. Yeah. Fall. Okay, so we're right at that time where we're moving from summer into fall. And things kind of shift into fall in the garden, right? We're not doing exactly the same things. What might be different in the fall? The leaves start to fall. The leaves start to different fall. Colors. Yeah, what else? Just like right over there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. The leaves start to change colors. What happens in the garden in the fall? Is it a big time for planting? No. Not so much, but are there still some things we could plant? Pumpkins. <gasps> it's a big time for harvesting. So things like pumpkins that we planted way, way long ago are great big and ready to harvest. Not quite yet. Ours you're going to see today are still kind of small and green. But they got some time before Halloween to grow and we can carve them or make pumpkin pies. But there are some things we can plant at this time of year. So today we'll do a little bit of planting. Anyone want to guess something we can plant in the fall? Flowers. Flowers? Mm -hmm. mm, not usually, because it's kind of cold. And what we like to plant in the fall are the things that can handle the cold. So I'll tell you some of them. Things like lettuce and spinach. We can keep growing those for a good long time. Things like garlic, if we poke them in the ground right now, they just stay under the ground all winter long, and then in the spring, they'll shoot up and they'll grow new garlic. So that's one of the things that you all will be doing today, is planting some garlic. We'll also be doing a little bit of cleanup in the garden. 
okay we're gonna some of the stuff that's just all done we've harvested everything we can or maybe the bugs beat us to it we're gonna pull some of that stuff out okay. and then we're gonna go do some fruit harvesting and make some probably some apple pear berry sauce mm. and we're gonna put it in jars so that you all will be able to take them home because that's one of the things that's really special about the fall is it's the time when we start thinking about saving food for the winter. I want to give you guys a little quiz. I got some food in my bag. And I want to, I want to see if you can tell me which of the foods in here are fresh, which means they wouldn't last very long. Like we can put them in the refrigerator and they'd last for a little while. And which of the ones are preserved, which means we could probably save them for months okay and we could enjoy them say at Christmas time or when it's snowing outside you ready okay so what milk. about this one milk fresh or preserved fresh fresh okay so where did this milk came from the store but well where does milk really come from Cows. Yeah. yeah, okay. Cows or goats or sheep. But this milk, we probably, a month from now, would it still be good to eat? Is there anything we could do to it that would make it last longer? Put it in the, in the fridge or something. We could put it in the fridge, yep. Is there anything we could turn it into that might make it last longer? <gasps> yeah. yeah, okay. So fresh or preserved? Preserved. This one's, yeah, kind of one of those in between. Like it won't last forever, but one of the ways that for hundreds of years people have saved milk or stored milk has been with cheese, okay? And Izzy, you know from Camp Pizza mm -hmm. that when you take a big gallon of milk, how much cheese does it make? It makes a bun. It does make a bunch, but it's, it shrinks down a whole bunch, right? Because you end up with the whey, uh -huh. and you end up with that little ball of cheese. Yep. So that's one of the ways that we save milk. Now, let's see. What else do I have in here? Pickles. Fresh or preserved? Preserved. preserved. Mm. Okay. Pickling is actually a way we preserve things. What are pickles? Like, do are, these things grow in a garden? Kind. Thank yeah. you. They're cucumbers. Can we pickle anything else? Um, not really. Has any? Are you sure? Has anyone ever had a dilly bean? Yeah. Or pickled beets? Yeah. No, you guys are thinking I'm crazy. Well, I should have brought some of those for you today. Yeah, there's a lot of things that if we, with basically, if we do a process that sticks them in vinegar, it helps them last for a good long time. Okay, let's see, what else? What happened to my little bowl? I lost my little bowl of fresh. Of course, now I gave you guys the clue. Uh-oh. Okay, what about that? That's a bean. Fresh. fresh. It's fresh. a what? That's fresh. It's fresh. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of you probably planted this radish <gasps> during farm camp. You might have, mm -hmm. I don't know. Could, do you recognize that one? Is that one yours? <laughs> that was the one Charlie was holding on. Oh, yeah. Tr famous Charlie with his radish. I don't think this is the same radish, yeah. but yeah, same kind of thing. So this is yeah, fresh. My and you know what? We could pickle radishes, too. Mm -hmm. My yeah. leaves weren't, did not have any hair to them. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's not your leaf. Now, what about this? Um, prunes. Has anyone ever eaten a prune? Anyone want to taste a prune? I eat prunes. I love prunes. Anyone want one? Awesome. You'll try one? Hi, you want one? Yum. Anyone else want a prune? Yum. Oliver? No. Charlie? No other prune takers can take? Fresh or preserved? Preserved. What was it when it was fresh? I'll give you a hint. We have them here. Some of you really liked picking them. Oh yes, they're plums. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the crazy thing is if we take this and we dry it out, it may turn we into end that. up with this, right? Mm -hmm. This lasts a really long time. Anything else we could do to preserve this? Hey. Not Make mine. It oh, yeah. 
Beautiful. We could make it into jam. Anything else? Um, some sauces. Or some kind of sauce, sauce. or syrup. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know what? You can also pickle plums. I'm not wild about that personally, but you can. Pickle plums. Pickle plums. Okay, what about that? Fresh. 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 Very fresh. fresh. In fact, so fresh, I just pulled them off a bush a little while ago. Um, but you can also put them in jam. You can put them in jam. What else could we do to preserve a, a blackberry? Anyone have an idea? Whoops, Ooh. there goes my blackberry. Anyone want a blackberry? I like one more. Me too. No, may I please have one? This yes, you may. This is very Thank squishy. Thank you. You're welcome. Blackberry, sir? Yeah. Okay. Um, very squishy, very good. So we good. could make jam. Mm -hmm. We could dry them. Sometimes we dry berries. So let's see, we've got pickling. We've got turning things into cheese. We've got drying. We've got preserving or canning like we do with, oh, Izzy, do you recognize this? Yes. <laughs> Who made yes. this? Did. Yeah, yeah, you did, you did. So Izzy, the week that she was here, we made strawberry rhubarb jam and mm -hmm. that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah. But could we eat this today? Is it still perfectly good? Yeah, you could eat it like yeah. during Christmas or yeah. like in January. Personally, I am saving it for exactly that reason. <laughs> okay, so that's another way that we save food. So, Lots of different ways that at this time of year we can start saving the food. You guys ready for a story? Um, yeah. Yeah, you thought I'd never ask. Okay, it's a new one. Don't worry, you've never heard this one before. <laughs> Anyone heard this one? Okay. No. Okay, Oliver, so this one's called Hard Scrabble here? Harvest. Can you see Oliver? He's got to scooch closer. Excellent. Okay. And we're gonna see if we can relate to any of the things that yeah, happened to the farmers in this book. Mate, do you wanna go over by Tessa and you might be able to see better? The farmer plants early in the spring. He'll be lucky if he harvests a thing. Stuffing in the turkey cranberry sauce. Sit down to eat it, hungry as a hoss. Sit down to eat it, hungry as a pup. Here come the relatives to gather it up, to gobble it up. Oh, look, and then we got the dog and the cat. So it used to be way back before we had grocery stores that if you didn't preserve a whole bunch of food in the fall, what would happen in the wintertime? No food. No, no food. food. So it's, I think it's kind of hard for us to remember sometimes that it used to be that everybody had to really work to get their food for the wintertime. We are going to take care of our animals and then we're going to go harvest some things for our applesauce. I some of them are, are dust bathing. Do you see the ones flopping around in the dust up there? They're taking little dust baths. Well, you know, I bet Lucas, if you held that right there, we could see if it's hungry. It may, it may be right now too scared to be hungry because it's waiting for me to let go of it. Hi, cutie. I think the water's okay. We'll get their food filled up. I see the bunnies eating the food. Yeah, they're excited that you guys are giving them some food. They've been waiting for you. Charlie, would you mind taking Matei's and filling this one up too? And then Kai, could you maybe take this container trade. back? Or yeah, you guys can trade whichever one. And we'll go put those back in the food bucket. I believe they want us. Bunny. Oh, they're so excited. Watch your heads there. Hey, hey, thank you. 
All right, let's let this little guy go down. Okay. And Kai, you've got the water. And do you all remember if we're going to hold the bunny, how do we need to hold the bunny? On your lap. Yeah, so we're going to hold it down low, right? So that if we accidentally drop it or if it gets out of our arms, it doesn't have far to fall. Yep, exactly like that, Charlie. That would be great. Hi, how did you get over there? Over here. Why did Kai get over there? He went through a forest of blackberries to get there. Mm -hmm. Oh look, that bunny found itself a nice little cozy hut in the middle of all that green. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wow! Are you stuck on something there, Kai? <laughs> Oh, you got it. There you go. Yeah, they're soft, huh? So I'm with one of the parents, Terry Oliver, who you've got one, two children here? Tell me. One son, Oliver. And how, how has this been for you as a parent? What have you seen changing for Oliver? It's a, a really strong, renewed interest in, in the home garden and in cooking. You know, He's always been into in food. We're very into food in our house so and in our professions. And um, he has just just really um, buoyed his enthusiasm right for the home right garden here, and for making salad for dinner Got and requesting specific things that he had Let's never really requested before right from the right farmer's right market right and man. from the co op. Like what? Like, like chard? Chard? chard. Yes. Right man, Mom, could you get some chard? Wow. Okay. <laughs> sure. So he's changing his eating habits. Yes, yes. Does it look like so he's more involved right, with the cooking one. and the yeah, preparing? He is. And he's talked about the food pyramid. He's talked about the food pyramid and the different parts of the fruits and vegetables, well, different parts that he eats that we consume well, and the parts that we compost. Go, so it's been a really nice, uh, well-rounded experience <laughs> as far as so the gardening. And then the community sense, so just I'm being thinking, with his friends in an environment job, where guys. they're interacting with animals oh my gosh. and outdoors cool. and food in the garden. It's just Here's been a job. really, we really great experience. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. He's lucky. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, and yes, you yes, are. Yes. I'm with David Arcese, but he calls it Arcis. Yeah. In America, yeah. you've got you've got several children that have been part of this. Three. Really? Yeah. For how long? Two for two summers, and one just started at the end of this summer. And how's that been for them and for you? It's been great for all of us. It's um, our kid, the boy, the two boys, our older kids, who are now six and five. Uh, just had a wonderful introduction mm. to working in the dirt in ways other than just playing with trucks and things and um, and learning how to how to grow things and most important I think why we grow things and uh, uh, in terms of we don't need to go to the grocery store and someday we may not be able to uh -huh. so let's start uh -huh. doing it ourselves uh -huh. So what have they brought back that is, has changed? Any things changed in your family life because of Well, they that? usually make lunch now. Oh, good. Yeah. Not, not uh, exactly with the same ingredients they eat here, but with the same kind of uh, enthusiasm and, and methods, you know. Let's see what we have and what we can make out of it, and uh, that's what we're going to eat. Are the kids more involved when you go to the market than they were before that? Yeah, they're a mess in the grocery store, and they're happy campers running around telling us what to buy at the market. Well, it may be that when you've seen it in the ground or you've planted it, it's it's more interesting or than than just something at the store. It is, and you can't tell. you can't explain to a kid how you plant a seed and the the stuff grows and you pick it and then you do whatever and eat it. But when they come here and they actually participate in all that, they. Um, they pick it up easier than adults, I think. So are you guys ready to give your fruit a bath? If you guys go right over there to where Charlie is, he'll turn on that water for you and let's give these guys a good rinse in. We can just hold the whole bowl under there. Yeah, get them all nice and clean. That's good. If you want to set that down, Georgia. And yeah, just so we don't tip it. And then we can swish them around a bit. And then we'll drain them off. So. Yeah, I think we're just going to pull them out and stick them right in well, here. So if you can pull out your fruit and stick them right in there. Charlie, are you going to hold that for me? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Load them up. 
pears and apples in the same bucket now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we know that nothing got sprayed on these apples and pears. We know they're pretty clean. The only thing we're worried about rinsing off are some bugs. And that's not bad. Yep. And bugs and germs. Yeah, a couple germs. Do you want to set that on the table, Charlie? So now what? That probably we're going to wait and see what these guys brought and we'll add to it. And then I think we'll get to the business oh, of chocolate. What you guys got? I need help. What do I do? <laughs> I need help yeah. with this. All right, yes, I will come do. and aid okay. you, Kai. So, this okay. one, there's a couple things we're well, going to do. Lucas, First, we as soon as you, you watch this you demo that the Kai and I are going to give you, then you can attempt oh, no. something. Yeah. 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 Okay, Kai, okay, like are you going to help me push? Do the mm -hmm. Ready? Not Let's quite push. Right. Oh. Do you want me to do it or do you want to nice. do it? Nice. Good okay, job. Go Laura, can I look? Isn't a good one. Oh, nice job. And then if you need help pushing out the core, I can do that for you. We have more slices. Awesome. You want to go ahead and pour them in? Yeah, just pull those guys off the top. I would nice job say cutting, Lucas. Yeah, we're going to give up on those pears, Charlie, but let's focus on the apples if there are any left, like that one in front of you that looks pretty decent. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Well, maybe if we cut it, we can cut off the bits that worms got to. Yeah, I don't mind sharing with the worms. Oh, as long as we get too. the good part. Okay. You think you got it? Yep, I if you change your mind. Izzy, you could know. you do that last apple right there, or was there a problem with that one? There was a problem. Oh, it smells so good mixed with the blackberries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What it's that? funny, it's just like the rainbow salad we made. Yeah. Yeah. Here's your smell. Everything turns purple. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So, what do you but, think? Should we put some in? But it's from yes. the apples, not from the beets. That's right. Oh, and I think well, also from the blackberries. Yeah. Well, it's actually not from the apples. It's fully from the blackberries. Right. It's going to be good. Kai, it is going to be good. Help for me, Kai? So what comes next? Well, when we're done with this, then we're going to go over and mash our applesauce. And some of it we will stick in our mouths, and some of us we will can and save for later. You know, this is such fun. I, this has been fabulous. You are, you are growing the future growers. And we good hope. people. And eaters. So and eaters. Yeah. yeah. We hope that if we grow discerning eaters, then they foster a farming culture that is sustainable because they demand it. Yes. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank wonderful. you. And fun. Don't you want all the kids doing this? You're watching Peak Moments, locally reliant living for challenging times. I'm Janae Donaldson. My guest is Laura Cloud and a whole lot of fun kids. Join us next time.